Uh, uh, hello, everybody. Uh, thanks again. Uh, thanks for joining this session. Uh, welcome to the Friday uh, Funda, uh, hosted by Efun and your host Payan here. Uh, again, another yet another uh, uh, valuable speaker here. It's a very interesting topic. Uh, so he is the first speaker who made us uh, made sure that we made the poster six times. So he made us uh, redesign it uh, six times, and uh, still I guess he has some issues. So we said, I mean, we have to go go live. We going to help it. So that's how he's so passionate, and he wants to make sure uh, things are uh, uh, you know perfect and whatever uh, he's trying to achieve, right? Uh, so he has he comes from a very different background, and uh, so that you can actually see that, right? So uh, by degree, I think uh, so uh, he's actually an engineer. Yeah. So uh, he is uh, engineering from uh, NIT uh, Surat Kal, right? Uh, so also he was having a very good uh, in terms of uh, IT life. So he also traveled to Sydney when on site when he was working with the Tata Infotech, and I still envy that he had attended uh, Sydney 2000 Olympics, right? Uh, uh, so I don't know what happened, and that's what he's going to tell us the journey. Like uh, suddenly there was a so there's a Nirvana one where he saw, and then he saw that okay, I need to get a design, right? So uh, he's worked with very various different uh, kind of genres and uh, from a service company like a Cognizant uh, uh, to uh, LMS uh, kind of as a thing like a Trina Systems to Microsoft. Uh, to uh, principal designer and uh, intuit, right? Uh, Med uh, life and the latest was uh, he was heading the capillary, right? So during all this journey, there was another side of uh, uh, to him. So so that's what is uh, the art side of it, right? So uh, he had the courage and the gut to also take that path and see and explore himself, and uh, that's what that's where he's going to bring that uh, 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 the artistic thing uh, over here. Uh, uh, right to to uh, uh, you know all of us. So we have uh, Puri Ravi Krishna, uh, so uh, uh, who started his career as a uh, as a software engineer for Vanity Surat Kal, which inspired him to like do a masters in IDC, and then he had his various roles he played in uh, various different MNCs. Uh, but there is, but still he's so proud to call as an artist, right? So yeah, that's 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 the whole point. Like you know why? So. Over to you, uh, Puri. So uh, yeah. we want to excited to uh, know your uh, the journey, what you took, uh, apart from what we don't know in LinkedIn, right? Yeah. Thanks, Dian. Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining in. Uh, today, I'd like to walk you through uh, my presentation, which is more of a personal journey of art. So, uh, if you're wondering uh, uh, why, uh, it's uh, let me tell you the story first. So uh, briefly uh, about my childhood, I grew up in the 80s in uh, the tribal district of Koraput in uh, uh, Odisha. Uh, my parents are from Andhra Pradesh, but uh, my uh, father used to work as an engineer in a public sector undertaking uh, in the factory there in uh, Odisha. Now, uh, my childhood uh, uh, was the most happiest. Uh, I grew, uh, grew up uh, with trees all around me and hills all around us. So, uh, I mean, uh, since childhood, I kept on drawing and I was very good at it. And uh, uh, my father, although he was an engineer, he mostly spoke about the arts, literature and music. And uh, I remember him distinctly uh, mentioning about uh, Vincent van Gogh and his paintings. And uh, he was very sympathetic towards his tragic life. And uh, we just had the small brochure in which four or five works of Van Gogh uh, were there. We didn't have any book or so. Uh, so even in 10th class, just before the exams, I was mostly drawing uh, from Sports Star, um, all the cricketers, uh, pencil sketches, and uh, uh, also paintings, but uh, most of them from the leftover uh, paint tubes, which my father had uh, from his time of uh, him exploring it as a hobby. Now, uh, people all knew that I was very good at art, but uh, when it came to uh, picking a career uh, uh, post school, uh, I chose engineering and I didn't pick fine arts. Now, subsequently, I uh, chose the path of design and uh, for the past uh, 20, uh, 15 years, I've been working as a, a designer. Uh, but the key question here uh, uh, is uh, why why, why didn't I take uh, 
fine arts. Why didn't I choose fine arts? So uh, if you grew up watching uh, TV in the 80s, uh, you would have possibly watched Hindi cinema. My references uh, would have been to uh, <clears throat> Bollywood movies where uh, the artists are never portrayed as being very successful, right? So you will see them uh, say, if Raj Kapoor as an artist in Anari doesn't have money ever. And uh, the so society then, uh, this is just uh, two years post liberalization. Uh, nobody ever, everybody uh, dreamt of being uh, middle class and middle class never aspired to be rich. They just wanted to be middle class. And uh, their biggest fear probably was that they do, do not, did not want to go back to poor. So my father comes from a farmer uh, family background. Uh, my mother also uh, doesn't have much of education then. So my mother uh, uh, made sure that I am. Uh, I understand that uh, that I need to start work hard and uh, for us to be able to be well off in the future. So uh, I I don't have any regrets or uh, uh, about the uh, uh, kind of journey that I have had, but. Uh, there is still that nagging feeling that uh, what if I had done fine arts? So there is this poem by Robert Frost. Uh, he wrote it after he and his friend used to walk, uh, go for evening walks. Both were poets. And uh, when it came to choosing two different paths, uh, uh, they would pick a path, but his friend would always lament that, oh, we should have picked the other path. So uh, I am that friend who would always keep thinking that what if I, we had taken that other path? Right, but it's not that uh, I had stopped drawing or I hadn't pursued art even in engineering. So in engineering, people always used to call me the fartist. So basically, uh, I, I drew something and then uh, they don't understand it, but I explain it to them. And across those four years, uh, whenever they needed posters uh, for any college events or uh, college fests, they would always come to people who could draw a little bit. And I was the one who used to make uh, uh, A2 size posters, uh, hand-drawn posters. So for all events, they would come. Uh, so uh, across those four years, I collected articles from uh, the Sunday news magazine uh, papers and carefully bound them and made it into a booklet at the end of four years, right? Uh, even as while working as a software engineer for three years, I continued exploring, uh, doing caricatures. So I built a good portfolio, uh, which I showed it to uh, during my interview at IDC and uh, I got into design. Uh, but it was not until 2011. Uh, this was uh, six years post my master's uh, from IIT. Uh, uh, I was in the US on deputation for a long-term visa. so. Uh, I had bought myself a new laptop with uh, 8 GB RAM and uh, uh, like the core i5 processor. So I was uh, uh, very excited about doing lots of graphics. So uh, I went to the shopping mall uh, for groceries when I picked up uh, 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 a packet of chicken legs. Uh, that's when I got home and then realized that uh, uh, each of those legs comes from a different chicken. So in America, it's vastly mechanized farms. So I saw that as an atrocity against uh, chicken. So I invented this uh, uh, story about uh, Shi Guevara, uh, who is a revolutionary chicken, uh, who fought for the liberty of all chicken. He betrayed, uh, but he was betrayed while fighting for the liberation of uh, Bulgaria. So uh, it was kind of a story that I was trying to create. And uh, uh, there is the small chicken who's named after this revolutionary. And uh, just a minute. So uh, I started drawing uh, with Inkscape software. Uh, I didn't have Illustrator with me. So uh, these are small, innocent uh, uh, things which uh, children would say, right? A chicken would, may not be able to fly, but he aspires to fly. And uh, something like, uh, what is a nuclear bomb? Uh, it's something. It's a mushroom that we cannot eat. Uh, then I uh, moved to a uh, theme around uh, women, right? So uh, these are the two cartoons that uh, I made, uh, uh, which uh, I think the humor uh, stands out. Uh, then uh, I found that only chicken was very limited. 
thing so i moved into the animal world uh, i looked at relationships so in this case uh, the symbiotic relation between an egret and a buffalo and uh, how uh, women uh, generally uh, uh, react to men and this was about uh, uh, the time when social media caught on and people are uh, creeping about traffic so it's basically human story of humans only but uh, represented uh, through the animal world uh, once i had a sizable amount of drawings then i wrote to uh, nala ponnappa who was the cartoonist for the bangalore times and who i uh, grew uh, throughout college and my time in bangalore uh, i always saw his cartoons so he replied and he was very encouraging he said you should market these uh, but subsequently i returned to back to india and for the next 3 years uh, uh it was nothing uh, eventful or i didn't uh, really uh, expand on my drawings uh 2014 i was back in bangalore uh, i discovered the ink pen so uh, what is so great about the ink pen so this is the drawings from uh, jean jack sempe somehow i came across his drawings and what i loved about it is the quality of the stroke right it looks effortless it's free flowing it's not uh, hindered and the second aspect was the humor uh, the humor there is no uh, punch line nothing but there is this sweet quality of uh, that uh, even a grown up when he looks at uh, spots and aircraft he waves to it even though the way nobody uh, on the aircraft can wave back right and he doesn't even draw the aircraft he is the shadow of the aircraft so uh, he he is making the user uh, or the audience think about it and you to get the humor you need to think it through it right and this is another favorite of uh, drawing mine uh, it's about uh, how women are obsessively uh, 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 obsessive about cleaning their house right they want it spick and span so he is uh, uh, a cartoonist from the 50s so he is still alive uh, he is uh, past 90 probably so uh, you he had this huge elaborate drawing in which the humor is hidden somewhere in the corner so you look through it and you think through it and then you arrive at the drawing right so i started to say that okay uh, um, i'll draw in the context of uh, india so uh, this is a temple in belandur bangalore so i went there and i tried to draw uh, 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 a view from the top imagine the view right and then uh, subsequently i did a illustration for a story of a, that a friend had written uh, here i was not using a pencil my view was that uh, if it doesn't come out well then i'll uh, use the uh, i'll draw it again uh, this was uh, the traffic scene uh, that we generally encounter so in a way i'm trying to uh, derive from his drawing style uh, how can i make it uh, more fluid and less rigid right and uh, uh, borrowing from uh, scenes you know, that uh, we generally get to see in the city uh, the most uh, uh, frequently seen person was the traffic cop so if you are going to work you have lots of cars and the only person standing outside would be this odd cop so i was trying to build humor about how uh, uh, this motorist try to escape the uh, cops uh along with that uh, uh, i used to try uh, painting as well uh, it's not that i hadn't painted earlier but it's about uh, coming back uh, and taking it as a uh, uh, like uh, in in time uh, with it so I chose acrylics uh, to begin with because it's easier to work with water i didn't you uh, straight away jump to oil because oil tends to take a lot of time and you have to keep it uh, uh, on a like separately for it to dry and all that so because i was the one paying for the canvases i was always scared but my son would always uh, jump in and uh, take over any of the canvases and uh, he had he was very prolific i would say so uh, this was me uh, first starting off with uh, raw canvases uh, i tried painting a bird which i saw in nepal i couldn't take a photograph but uh, i had the urge that uh, i need to draw it so but i was still scared that okay the uh, the uh, the bird will get uh, hidden because if i put more uh, uh, 
uh, color. And my son was uh, having a, a ball. He was uh, very free and he, he just uh, splashed colors and that looks more nicer than my drawing. So around 2005, uh, 15, a year later, I'm still directionless. Uh, I just painted with the acrylics, whatever. So uh, on Facebook or something, I come across a nice uh, image of a bird. I draw it with whatever colors I have. And this was a lady I saw uh, one fine morning uh, walking with her uh, uh, a bouquet to her office. Uh, so it, it's, it was not like she was probably a receptionist or a caretaker in the office. Uh, this is uh, quite huge as well. Uh, then I did uh, a drawing of uh, Gandhi and uh, uh, I found the courage to paint over that uh, crow which I left uh, a year back. Right? <clears throat> this was uh, again another attempt at looking at a little bit abstract theme. Uh, this was an interpretation of the poem by Charles Bosky. Uh, the blue bird. It's about uh, people suppressing their emotions and not letting their inner feelings out. So I tried to represent those, uh, uh, the blue bird uh, in a very abstract way. Our emotions as just uh, abstract patches of color. Uh, there is no need of the head. Uh, so this was more like borrowing from uh, what you've seen, uh, how others draw, how others have approached uh, to do abstraction. Right. So. Sorry. Yeah. So the next year in 2016, so it's a five years from when I started, uh, uh, there was this sudden change where I, where I ditched the computer. So there was this 2016 mob lynchings, right? So uh, I uh, drew, started to draw these dogs. So I, instead of uh, drawing the other animals, now my view of the politics in India was that uh, uh, it was more like do two dogs, street dogs asking a, a, a puppy, what, questioning it, what it was eating. This was uh, with reference to that uh, beef uh, incident. And then subsequently it was getting more and more nasty where I felt that uh, the India that I loved uh, is actually biting its own tail. Or uh, you look at a dog uh, which has a fleece and uh, the uh, the dog gnaws at itself and hurts its own, its own body, right? So I made a decision that I will not uh, draw any more political cartoons. That was a very conscious decision because I felt that art uh, should uh, be more uh, nicer, it's happier, right? So I went back to drawing and I probably realized quite late that in uh, while using a software, it takes five hours to tune those curves and other things. It's not a natural way of drawing, whereas uh, I used all oil pastels and it, it came out very fluid. And uh, uh, I also wrote uh, uh, the punchlines uh, in my own style of writing, influenced by Oliver Jeffers, right? So this is a very conscious decision. He, I'll not use uh, uh, that. And this was this other uh, drawing where I'm now uh, started to get into the animal world back. And I'm saying uh, uh, a, a tiny bird uh, advising the crocodile. So this is also about a little bit of knowledge from the animal world where crocodiles don't harm birds and allow them to clean their teeth, right? Uh, along the way, I also made a conscious uh, decision that I will sign my work with uh, in my native tongue, mother tongue, uh, Telugu. And uh, <clears throat> I, it's not that I was happy with the line quality. So uh, the ink pen or uh, the oil pastels, uh, the, there is a certain quality of that everybody wants to achieve, right? So there is a certain feeling associated with it. So um, I also tried charcoal and this was one joke I made uh, around uh, where some sick uh, 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 filed a case in the Supreme Court that there should be no Sardar jokes, right? So. Um, uh, uh, the charcoal, although it has that uh, nice raw quality, it tends to become very messy. And uh, you, uh, I love, if you wanted to add colors, then it mixes with the black. Uh, I also looked at the works of uh, Ralph Stedman, who, who, whose uh, political satire is very scathing. Uh, his process is uh, quite nice. He 
he practices uh, something called gonzo art so he splashes the color then looks what form it has taken and then he draws the remaining things around it and uh, there is this uh, ronald searley uh, who, who started uh, work after uh, world war 2 and uh, his drawings of cats uh, are quite interesting so he uh, all of these guys use uh, uh dip pen ink right so there is the line quality is unpredictable uh, so uh, the ink flow is not uh, uniform so that adds certain quality to the line uh, but for me uh, i felt that uh, i should uh, i mean i have bought uh, calligraphic ink and i have tried uh, i uh, nib pens but i didn't get a good quality uh, pen so i said i'll just stay with this uh, lamy ink pen um, and just start get started so uh, i i just uh, so the subject matter was something i was lacking there is no uh, definite direction uh, 2016 december i made a uh, trip to rajasthan it was a four weeks trip uh, i wanted to travel alone uh, I, it was meant to be uh, a uh, unplanned journey so i, I don't decide uh, what my next destination is or where i'll be in a given place and i'll just stay in very modest lodges so there is this quote uh, which says uh, travel far enough you meet yourself right so uh, i traveled to uh, udaipur then jodhpur and jaisalmer so one of my friends uh, uh, who looked at my photographs on facebook uh, said uh, anybody can take photographs since you uh uh love drawing why don't you draw what you're seeing and spend some time drawing the things that you see and i took her advice and uh, in jaisalmer i just bought uh, with 50 rupees uh, i got uh, a drawing notebook uh, one dvd marker pen and some children's uh, drawing pencils and they, they would they didn't have anything of higher quality than that and so i just uh, uh, start started to draw and a lot of people appreciated this so uh, i just drew a couple uh, uh, where the husband ordered uh, rasgullas for his uh, wife so uh, i i built the humor right and i learned to draw quickly uh, these are not live drawings these are memorized and then drawn then uh, around the same place i observed that uh, uh, there is this old man who didn't hit the cow uh but he shouted it loud so that the uh the the voice was uh, commanding and the cow actually moved uh, it was blocking his path and there was this uh, other scene where all the shopkeepers sh- shuttered down post lunch and they enjoyed a game of uh, uh cards uh, while the rest of the workers uh, stood around them and uh, uh just uh, observed the game right so as and when i posted it lot of people like crashed and then uh, then that's when I, it dawned on me that uh, hey it's the people uh, of india who are the uh, most interesting subject especially women right so uh, this is the woman i saw uh, weaving uh, garland uh, uh, outside uh, the sikandarabad railway station and to build the humor uh, anybody can draw uh, by looking at uh, others or you look at photographs and draw but the humor is the difficult part so i use this integral equation about uh, this lady uh, weaving uh, flowers and integrating them together and uh, some uh, images were more of uh, who i saw and uh, uh, the humor may, may have lagged in the initial drawings sometimes the drawings uh, of the eyes were not consistent so the man has a tintin like eyes whereas the woman has a different uh, eyes so i said i will not bother i think uh, over a period i just kept drawing on the subjects that i came across uh, interestingly i had moved by then uh, to the outskirts of uh, bangalore uh, i stay close to a village so uh, a lot of the people i see before i come to the office uh, were people from the village and around uh, so uh, uh, unlike earlier where i was only drawing cops the, this is where i was drawing uh, people who were who load uh, whose attire and costumes and way of dressing is very very different and very interesting a lot of detail right so i got better at the humor i believe uh, uh, people like uh, uh, observing uh, 
a bald man uh, uh, chopping off coconuts or the incident where uh, uh, triple talaq is banned and uh, the reaction of this old people who come from dubai to marry off uh, young women right uh, they'll be chuckling out with alternate plans and uh, there are a few others that i had done sorry uh, so Three months into 2017, I felt that okay, I am doing a lot of good work. Uh, uh, what if I take uh, uh, it as a full-time activity? Uh, now this is like people encouraging you on your Facebook, and I said that uh, okay, I have sufficient money for one year. Uh, I'll take this plunge and say that I'll uh, <coughs> uh, uh, I'll see if I can make a living out of art. Uh, people did buy this uh, thing, but uh, after two three exhibits, I discovered that. Uh, uh, the exhibition money is more than what I earn uh, from the sale of the things. And also it is very difficult uh, to print, transport and uh, deliver and preserve this uh, uh, print spell. So I would have, I don't know how many people will order uh, a certain image. I print usually 10, but nobody buys that. So uh, I was able to solve that when uh, one uh, founder in from Bombay, he called and said that uh, I sent it to him and he accepted and I was able to sell some two, three. Uh, so people were actually liking it and I was happy with the humor and the colors and the uh, uh, quality of line. Maybe I could, uh, the quality of line would improve over a period of time or the style will mature over a period of time. Uh, but the thing was that uh, I would not be able to sustain myself just with this. It's more of a hobby or a, a, a side activity. So I continue to look at uh, uh, life with the curiosity of a child. Uh, sometimes a photograph is all you need to take, uh, which has a lot of life in it, uh, more than trying to draw it all over again. So here's my theory that, uh, 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 that uh, it, it takes around eight years to find your voice. When I say finding a voice, uh, I started off with something, you'll start off with something and uh, all these things, but uh, a clear direction or some sense of, oh, I'm achieving something is something uh, you'll realize only after in the eighth year. So to uh, substantiate uh, it, uh, this is another case of uh, a Pune-based engineer called Sunil Nambu. Uh, uh, he was posting in 2017 uh, uh, his work on uh, Facebook. So I was the first who used to react and uh, share his uh, work. Why? Because is there anything that... Uh... Okay. So uh, uh, what I loved was the quality of the line uh, that he had achieved. Uh, they were all digital renderings, but still uh, the, uh, it was very free flowing. So he pinged me on messenger and he said, uh, just give me a number. Uh, and he wanted to have a chat. Yeah. Is someone calling from the seminar? No, nobody. Uh, go ahead. Okay. It's an excellent call. Sorry. So we had a good uh, half hour chat. And uh, the only question he asked me as was, uh, are you making any money? How are you sustaining yourself? So I told him, even I am doing, <laughs> struggling with that. So uh, th th that's the dilemma with everybody. Like uh, if you take a part, uh, do you earn enough money? So uh, he had worked for 15 years as a, in the corporate world. He was also trying out. So uh, it's a freelance cartoonist. He's trying to uh, get into cartooning. And uh, immediately in 2018, uh, he, I think he, uh, got the opportunity to do that uh, 100 days before the Kochi Binale. He was the one who was uh, creating uh, cartoons for the Kochi Binale as the days approach. Uh, uh, countdown cartoons. It's not like he uh, probably, he's still trying out uh, something on the similar lines to Dilbert uh, called Cubicle Republic. Uh, I don't think that succeeded. Along with it, uh, he would have uh, created something uh, uh, called the Thoughtology. Uh, which are all uh, uh, anything uh, that comes to his mind. But uh, finally, he got a job as uh, a ca political cartoonist in Asia Will magazine. So uh, quite uh, good for him. 
and uh, post that i also did some uh, wall art <coughs> for a few offices uh, this was again more like uh, uh, better in than uh, telling uh, selling prints uh, on a daily basis so it's like you do lots of stuff it's it's interesting it's more uh, more of graphic design you can say than pure art uh, but that's the need of the office so the uh, architect had a very clear uh, uh, need that uh, it should not uh, overwhelm the uh space it should be very light this kind of uh, inputs argument uh, there is another architect friend who then called me and he wanted uh, more of the nonsense kind of drawings the cartoonish uh, things uh, for uh, this thing, uh, for this uh, project uh, we did a lot a uh, few for this and uh, i felt a little confident uh, that uh, i can uh, uh, make a, some money out of this and i started uh, a uh, website called nonsense art studio that is the name of the uh, studio nonsense and uh, i was hoping that i'll uh, do lots of projects uh, along with it but uh, the uh, people who are asking me were asking for uh, radha krishna uh, portrait on on a wall or a buddha head uh, or uh, someone in some school on the outskirts uh, uh, to be done for their auditorium uh, for me it felt that the logistics Uh, didn't suffice. Uh, I couldn't uh, travel uh, all five days to the other side of the city. Uh, but uh, I think this is another avenue that is open. Okay, somewhere around uh, July, uh, six months down the line, I was like, uh, "What if I aimed higher? And uh, what if I did some serious art and then uh, uh, tried to sell them?" Uh, this was again uh, not in terms of uh, selling, but uh, again that nagging question that. Uh, what is art and uh, how do you get there right so you begin with uh, this uh, one feet uh, uh, canvases that you get on the uh, in the store and uh, i just painted village scenes uh, from the where my house was so people playing astachamma under a huge banyan tree uh, then there is the shepherd who's calmly sitting under the shade uh, of a tree while the sheep are all wandering around so uh when you begin uh, uh, every time you begin there is a block right so uh, i would say uh, there was a time uh, i just whatever paints were uh, left over with that i was trying to imagine something uh, so uh, it might feel embarrassing for now uh, but you need to see uh, how the work changes over a period of time so these are the first two drawings uh, there is no plan so it's just whatever colors are there you're picking the theme is about uh, maybe i was reading up articles on whistle blowers so i drew uh, aaron schwartz uh, the activist who committed suicide then uh, julian assange who was been jailed subsequently so then uh, i listened to some music uh, this was uh, uh, a poem which uh, ms subalakshmi sang in uh, the united nations in the 60s uh, that was my interpretation but it was more of me using a lot of white Uh, around this time i looked at the work of uh, francis bacon how going on the time okay so i looked at the work of uh, francis bacon and uh, maybe that influenced me to some extent where uh, i redrew the whistle blower uh, in uh, probably the colors that he would have used but uh, on a visit uh, to my friend uh, we traveled to the outskirts of bangalore there uh, we saw this uh, colorful gopuram near a village so that's when i realized that oh i need to pick the uh, colors which are more indian and uh, i made an attempt to buy colors which uh, i strongly believe are uh, very bright very colorful right and uh, uh subsequently uh, looking at other artists so this is one artist uh, whose work i really loved uh, uh basically she has been able to achieve mastery over a period of time so i just so uh, the uh, uh, half uh, uh, human and half animal uh, uh, sculptures always uh, existed so narasimha avataram or uh, uh, varaha avataram all of these are about uh, vishnu taking up uh, some some form of animal form and uh, killing the de demons right so gogi sarojpal's work uh, and then uh, 
my own interpretation i didn't pick any themes uh, i usually see the shepherd going uh, uh, walking by uh, near my house and then i saw women filling up uh, water uh, near the village uh, uh, public place so i i said uh, i mean the theme was uh, going in the direction but the colors if you observe are getting brighter and better then i saw this uh, children of migrant workers playing uh, near a construction site they were all seated uh, well dressed during a holiday and my first attempt uh, i couldn't really draw really well well uh, so i just uh, out of frustration i would have smudged it off uh, the second time uh, now i started to do abstraction of the construction site then trying to interpret better like uh, how do i depict this children i don't want to draw them as they are so i interpreted that uh, they are like this colorful birds that people bring from the forest and then uh, bring them to the city for uh, aspects for people right so it's basically they are, they are beautiful in their uh, natural surrounding in a village but they for whatever reason they are uh, now ended up in a city which is where they don't really belong the next was uh, the workhorse again a construction uh, worker uh, my representation was of her as ashwamedha ashwamedha uh, is a sacrificial horse uh, uh at the end of uh, the journey the horse is sacrificed uh uh here i was getting better uh, so i always had a good hand but if you have not uh, used a hand for 15 years then obviously it takes times to get back there and i was also understanding how uh, layering works how the colors start uh, uh how much of color to use and typically i would run out of paints because these uh, canvases are very huge so i Im i invested uh, in buying very large canvases because i felt uh, the small 1 ft uh, or 2 uh, ft uh, canvases are very limiting uh, that is not very easy for at least oil paints uh, one big regret was that uh, the face always use, looks like a supermodel it doesn't have this uh, feel of someone from a rural uh, setup right so this was another attempt again large canvas in which i want uh, wanted to draw the manual scavenger as lord krishna uh, so lord vishnu uh, this is the varaha avatara where he takes up the uh, avatar of a wild boar to rescue earth from the depths of the ocean now uh, my way of uh, looking at it was that uh, to look at it from the point of view of uh, the Uh, manual scavenger so uh, the painting was again a dark theme so i wanted people to experience the dirt uh, and the uh, grime and the unpleasantness so this is not a pleasant painting right so within this unpleasantness a man is working and uh, trying to rescue the world or uh, keep the world clean so uh, every time you are using oil paintings uh, you have to leave it to dry so you think uh, maybe i'll do something else so uh, it it helps you relax if you are drawing sceneries so uh, this is something i saw in front of uh, uh, my hall on the outskirts you have this wild uh, bush with lots of flowers uh, and uh, at the bottom of it there was this rock and the shape of the rock reminded me of something which i had seen in a book uh, long ago so it was about the uh, uh, brahmanda right so i drew it at the back of a canvas now i had run out of canvases and i ran out of paint as well so this was this book called ritual art of india which i purchased when i was in design school uh, so uh, to say that uh, i was always educating myself around art uh, but i didn't apply myself uh, to do art so now i am applying it and uh, i since the canvases are huge uh, i ran out of paint very quickly and since i stay very far away from the city uh, it it's kind of a pain because i get blocked uh, again i have to go to the market fetch the uh, paints october 2017 uh, uh, this is the moment when suddenly things uh, unravel so it is 9 months now right so clearly uh, 
I had gone to this uh, fancy store. So I was buying hardware. So while I'm doing this uh, work for this wall arts, I wanted to draw, a, uh, sorry, create a honeycomb with uh, nuts and bolts. So I didn't get wire from the hardware shop. So they didn't have thread either. So I walked into the fancy store and looking for packaging the thread, which uh, the samosa guy uses for tying. And uh, she understood differently and she uh, showed me this box of uh, uh, th uh, stitching threads and I was uh, totally bowled over because uh, th for the first time I'm seeing like uh, so many shades of yellow, so many shades of pink and so many shades of uh, blue and uh, with oil colors you have to struggle to find the right uh, 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 shade of color, right? So I just bought uh, each one is just five rupees. I just bought two cartons full of whatever colors I really love, right? So th there's a conscious attempt to say that this is my palette now and I'm not even limited by uh, the cost of it and the quantity of it. I can use it. So I was clearly seduced by this class. So this was the first attempt I made uh, uh, which didn't work out very well. So it's basically me discovering a medium, trying to draw and it's very time consuming and uh, very suffocating uh, because you can't uh, have the fan on, you can't have the window open because if there is a slight uh, uh, breeze, then the uh, drawing will uh, get smudged or it will get displaced. And I keep, uh, so, uh, the funny thing was that I approached it as a ritual practice. So if you see in uh, 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 village people draw uh, around a tree and uh, uh, tie the thread around it. Now I uh, sat here and uh, instead of sitting, uh, I started through walking all around the canvas, right? It's quite tiring and you get dizzy after a while. So after a while, I realized that uh, maybe the size that I'm drawing is quite huge. And I learned, learned to sit down and uh, the size that uh, this medium allows is only what my arm can reach. So that way, uh, this was the uh, second iteration, second attempt at uh, drawing the Brahmanda or the cosmic egg. So sometimes uh, you overdo it, right? So it's more like I was approaching it like paint and uh, I was trying to fill in, filling up that uh, white egg. So I want the entire uh, uh, inner thing to be fully white. Uh, but uh, later on, I realized that uh, this doesn't look great. Uh, uh, so it looks, and there is no undo. Once you have dropped the thread, uh, you can't pull it back because it pulled the entire thing towards you. So it's a very tricky medium to start with. Uh, this is the third attempt. Now this was again me going all around. Uh, uh, putting in, now I used a cloth instead of paper because I wanted it to do it and uh, the most uh, frustrating thing was that I would have spent some three days trying to cover up this entire drawing and uh, when I s s dozed off and uh, somewhere in the middle of the night uh, the power went off so I just walked and uh, the entire uh, effort was a uh, waste because it got smudged again. So uh, these are the things you learn that uh, there is a new medium, there is a behavior to it, and then there is a limitation. You can't uh, really have uh, uh, such a huge canvas. So there, uh, a maximum will be two feet by two feet is what your drawing should be so that you can uh, actually carry it around. So there is this other thing that uh, I'm having a, a studio which cannot be cleaned every day because I have my things on the floor now. And I took this to my bedroom uh, just for space. So I'm filling up my entire home with uh, uh, these things and not allowing my mother to clean the house. Uh, w one other limitation I discovered was that uh, you can't really draw objects. I was trying to uh, draw a lotus as an abstraction uh, with the fish, uh, but clearly uh, this medium is not to draw objects. It's, it's most suitable for abstract themes. Uh, so uh, this was an, so now I'm very dependent on the uh, book and what are all the themes that are described there, right? So Yoni is about reproductive energy present in the universe, which can, is the seed of life so it is all 
a lot of the indian thought and uh, tradition of our way of uh, thinking and looking at life so the left was an exploration which seems uh, literal uh, the right is the exploration which has more depth which has more meaning right so the choice of colors is more about this uh, energy the potent energy which is not yet life but it has all the pot- uh, uh, waiting for that uh, uh, bija or the seed to sprout and i was loving this uh, free form of this thread right so if you i had earlier tried i should use fabicol to uh, stick the threads but the moment it is stuck it becomes flat so this is a breathing uh, 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 work which mo- feels more like an algae in water so if, as long as it is free it is good but if you try to put adhesive or anything it will not look uh, uh, it will not have same feel to it now i also replaced the paper with khadi cloth now so uh, i was uh, going towards saying that i will not use manufactured paint or i will not use anything manufactured this is more like uh, uh, staying very close to uh, the earth i am uh, starting to identify with the uh, uh, like folk artist so this is lucky chan jain who is a mandana artist he learned it from his grandmother and continues to practice it uh, now so he 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 teaches in uh, nift probably and uh, this uh, he continues to do his work uh, this is yanimi yanima pikarli is an aborigine artist right he is he started to draw at the age of 90 right so he is almost 100 years old so uh, he is just keeps painting uh, whatever are the stories of uh, the native people of australia and uh, uh no shri jivesh mamashe is a, a early artist based out of uh, uh, maharashtra uh, he is also a farmer so uh, all of them have a day job and then they work on their art in the in their free time uh, mamashe expired uh, uh, just one year back so this is the gandhian moment for me right so i am spinning thread i am sitting on the floor and uh, uh, you experience this very uh, intimate uh, moment with just you and the thread and nothing else as usual i have my coworker my son who wa- now wants to be a footballer is a lionel messi fan uh, but uh, he got curious and uh, i gave, uh, since i understood the difficulty of a large canvas i gave him a small bowl and told him just use that and uh, he did uh, it for probably 5 to 10 minutes and he said it was tiring uh, this was the first work which really uh, got me uh, where i was happy for the first time it was a, again about uh, how life is formed so a cell has to divide uh, in order for an organism to be created so there is this tension between 1 uh, uh, and 2 so i for then i realized that uh, the contrast is not great on a white canvas so i used a black canvas then while i was admiring my work i i, uh, I was very excited then i felt uh, uh, this was like an organism uh, it should not be flat it should be in a bowl so uh, uh, i wanted something which is more of a concave surface so my intention was this will be mounted on the wall so i want uh, the audience to experience this as a, as a look in to another universe uh, not hard surface right so this was the hardware which i had initially purchased from the local uh, store uh, this is what uh, laborers use for tech, you know, carrying construction material uh, i used fabicol and tried to lay in the thread in but uh, then later on i realized that i should never use gum when i searched for uh, concave mirror or concave surfaces in uh, amazon then the first thing that came was a kadai so so uh, i couldn't uh, i wouldn't have been able to order this 3 ft by 3 ft uh, kadai from amazon so i went to kr markets uh, purchased uh, uh, this kadai which uh, this people uh, on the street use and it doesn't cost much it's around 2000 or 2500 so but the only thing was i had to transport it back from the city to my place and uh, i had a very clear thing that i need to uh, 
like uh, polish it then uh, uh, paint it and then let it dry and then uh, keep my artwork in this so uh, there is this thing uh, which uh, vincent van gogh wrote to his uh, uh, brother theo van gogh saying that uh, nature always uh, begins by resisting the rot strength but uh, he who truly uh, takes it seriously doesn't let himself be deterred by that resistance uh, finally nature and an honest rotsman see eye to eye so it has not been a, uh, an easy journey there are a lot of learning so uh, there is there are times when i would have done an entire drawing and uh, by the time i come back uh, it uh, the wind would have blown it all away so you begin all over again and uh, sitting for hours together is not easy uh, it can be very uh, stressful you uh, you have to take breaks uh, frequently this was uh, the artwork and the next idea uh, did was about uh, padma vyuham this is also a little bigger Uh, around three feet. So uh, this was an interpretation of uh, how Abhimanyu gets uh, stuck in the Padma Vyuha in Mah Mahabharata, and uh, I didn't want to represent it the way uh, I see it. It was my own interpretation of saying that uh, uh, what the true uh, deeper meaning is that we tend to get entangled in our life and uh, uh, fail to get out and do what we really love. So uh, this is more of uh, this is. Uh, a more detailed view of the same thing so you can see that uh, why i am so excited because uh, there are so many layers of it you don't know uh, what is happening but it's a very intense activity i would say uh, i would go on to say that uh, if medium is the message then perhaps the medium chooses the messenger right so uh, what do i mean by that? so there is a story i have been able to tell people saying that uh, uh it's not like i chanced upon the threads i am saying that uh, the threads chose me right so i didn't choose the threads uh, it, it was like as if the uh, threads uh, chose me it's a divine intervention uh, the, the uh, goddess has granted me that uh, hey why don't you use this hey puri uh, just to check on the time uh, yeah we have Five past five, so yeah, just. Uh, How many more minutes? Yeah, we have crossed five, so yeah, I would love to take questions as well. So we have a couple of questions, so yeah, it's up to you. Yeah. So, do do you want to do Q A or uh, quickly finish five slides? Yeah, please, please, I think finish it. Yeah. It's so, I don't want to uh, stop the flow. Yeah. So this was uh, the final drawing uh, which I did. Uh, this was my interpretation of Ravana. So. It around it took three iterations to get it uh, uh, the way I wanted it, uh, where I felt I did uh, justice to it. So, what is the deeper meaning of uh, those ten heads? So, so Ravana is a learned uh, man himself, uh, but he did uh, he made a mistake, right? So, uh, the deeper meaning is all of these are virtues and vices. So, all of us has Ram and all of us has Ravan. Uh, it depends on which of these. Uh, Uh, vices or virtues manifest themselves, right? So you become Ravana when the bad uh, characteristics start to dominate the good. So these were my uh, interpretation of all those uh, characteristics uh, to give a more abstract view of what Ravana looks like. So at this point, I wanted to ask the audience: uh, Do you want to open up the audio, uh, or how do you want to collect? So the question to the audience is: Is the picture on the left art? Yeah, you guys can use the chat, and uh, if it's yes, maybe uh, you can type one. If it's no, maybe zero. So you want to repeat the question, Puri? Yeah. So my question to the audience is: Is the image on the left art? Do you see art in it? okay so uh, to tell you the truth yeah, it looks like a lot of people are agreeing it's not yeah so uh, this is a question i started to pose saying that uh, i was uh, doing my work i walked into the kitchen 
i see this kadai filled with this uh, kitchen way uh, waste water and for some reason i saw uh, art in it right so i placed it and just took a photograph and uh, uh, whenever i show this to someone and uh, they say it looks it looks nice right so uh, the question again to the audience uh, uh, image on the right do you think it is art yeah so so there is nothing intentional in this so if you look closely uh this was uh, the when i'm painting i keep i wash the brushes right so over a period of time i left it uh, in my studio and because of the sunlight uh, gradually the water ev evaporated and uh, uh, since each day passed the water decreased in layers right so you have this gradation of stepped uh, uh, gradation where the water is coming thicker and thicker with color and that's how this came and the shape of the bowl uh, had a, uh, a square at the bottom so there is this interesting pattern that emerged so what i'm trying to say here is that uh, i didn't make an uh, conscious attempt at uh, making art still art revealed itself to me so my take is that the truth that i discovered is that art reveals itself to the seeker in myriad ways right so when you pursue art it will reveal itself to you when and where depends on how much of effort you put in and whether you are questioning yourself uh, across your journey lastly uh, it's not the road you walk it is the walking so whether you have done engineering whether you have done something design or whatever else or whatever you wanted to do uh, it doesn't matter as long as you keep trying so uh, i would say if you are a guitar player or you are a sitar player and you aspire to be that maybe you should continue doing it right so you, unless you keep uh, doing that uh, you will not find the uh, truth so uh, talking about the economics of it uh, do you believe art will sustain uh, yourself so this is a cartoon by uh, ponappa again it says that uh, clearly uh, your artwork even if you have achieved the best i think uh, it will be worth crores of rupees only after you are dead uh, good example would be vincent van gogh he never sold even one painting during his lifetime but uh, 50 or 100 years after he is dead uh, all of his uh, his are the most expensive paintings and as regarding uh, do you make art for an audience uh, uh, as you can see maybe 3 out of 100 people would actually be interested very keenly interested in your work so um, my my take is that you should make art for yourself first it's about your personal expression the people who are very keen on understanding art are the ones who will spend time trying to understand it and it doesn't matter if uh, others don't really understand art but uh, uh, as long so uh, the first drawing that i showed you when i showed it to my friends one said is it an owl another person said is it an apple so that's when i realized why artists don't name their uh, paintings they just want to say uh, it's good that uh, Uh, each person is allowed the freedom to interpret the way they want to do so just three more minutes uh, three takeaways that i want want to uh, people to uh, take from this talk is that uh, talking of creative courage a lot of people say uh, uh, it takes courage uh, this is a quote uh, saying that uh, to grow up and become who we who we really are uh, my say is that uh, courage is not the absence of fear Uh, it is acting in spite of the uh, fear so this is a quote by mark twain and i would say that uh, all through that one year i experienced a lot of anxiety when it came to uh, thinking that whether will i be able to find something will i uh, make enough money to la last me can i continue for three more years uh, uh, so beyond courage there is also the thing about discipline i have woken up at 4 am just to draw a cartoon and go to work in the first 3 months then uh, there is also this commitment you have to do it on a daily basis 
you it's not like you drawn once a week or once in a while and uh, that's when you will be able to master it so uh, as a hobby you can still continue it but uh, the point here is that uh, unless you exhibit that rigor uh, you may not finding something new so for me across one year uh, i have experienced a lot of anxiety so uh, there is this favorite uh, dialogue uh, of khader khan in uh, mutaddar ka sikandar so is a zinda hai wo jo maut se takrate hain and i underline takrate hain because and it's not about dying it's about having the ability to uh, embrace struggle right so a lot of us get comfortable uh, after we are uh, in, in at, at the later stages in life uh, but uh, i would say that you should keep still keep trying uh, whatever you wanted to do uh, lastly again from the same movie there is a song mar ke jeene ki ada jo duniya ko sikhlaye wo mukaddar ka sikandar so uh, my translation of it is uh, one who can teach you art even after his death uh, is a conqueror of destiny so despite uh, uh, van gogh dying uh, uh, at a very young age uh, he was very prolific with his work uh, it is very unfortunate that uh, 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 he could i mean he didn't taste success uh, or he had a very tragic life uh, but if you look at his paintings there is a lot uh, that uh, you can learn from so get busy and uh, when you have something interesting uh, don't hesitate to stand up and show it to the rest of the world thank you wow that was a astonishing presentation buddy i mean i think if you uh, if you i think you could actually hear uh, uh people starting up and giving you a starting ovation with a clap so all i think it's an amazing presentation it was a total visual journey so i think uh, we are like uh, yeah 10 minutes past 5 so definitely we'll take a couple of questions for sure so uh, tane has asked uh, all the couple of questions so his question is uh, yeah do i so do you think still there is scope for artists to showcase uh, in, in india exclusively so so what is your take on that i mean is that the reason why artists are struggling so i think we have uh, to understand uh, take a step back and say where does this thing come from so uh, if you look at the time of the kings before the british came uh, if you seen a uh, lot of trades are all uh, accounted for so the the kings and the wealthy are the patrons for artists right so the, uh, if you take uh, the case of the western then again portraiture uh, was the one where uh, artists made money and then they made uh, sceneries and with photography and everything coming so you will see industrialists are the ones who buy art so effectively you need uh, people with uh, uh, money who will buy art so in terms of opportunities uh, i would say that uh, with with the internet i mean a uh, lot of people taste success uh, it's the thing about are you waiting to be discovered or are you going out into the world and saying that uh, hey here i am look at my work right and uh, in terms of uh, i would still say that if the learnings uh, from the two examples that i showed uh, if i feel that you should always have a day job and uh, uh, unless you are very well off and very wealthy and uh, uh, you have all the time in the world or you have someone who is supporting you so there are uh, enough examples of a uh, uh, painter from gujarat uh, who uh from since childhood he used to draw and he was able to tell his family that i just want to draw and his family uh, is a uh, it's a joint family and they all said all right we'll manage the business you continue doing art and uh, his work if you see he just drew uh, uh, langurs his canvases are only langurs so i would say that uh, it's it's uh, something which uh, as the economy improves now uh, there are people with a lot of money and uh, there are avenues so if you are in bombay i don't think uh, yeah so when i went to uh, 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 exhibit in uh, bangalore and i asked them i want to be an artist they said what are you doing in bangalore you should go to bombay right so <laughs> that's how it is okay, so okay. Uh, uh, yeah abhinav's question is doing are you doing it full time now so i took a break uh, of one year uh, last two years i haven't done anything 
uh, so uh, whatever I showed was a process of uh, eight years and the last year is when I was able to invest a lot of time and uh, uh, for the past two years I have again got back to work so uh, it's more like uh, uh, it, it, uh, don't take it as a, at one shot take baby steps and uh, slowly you'll reach there. So my, my take is no one is an artist before uh, 40 and nobody is a master before 60. So if you look at all of the artists work, they have at the beginning, they have one, some uh, 10, 20 years later, they find uh, uh, arrive at a style, but the mastery of their work is shown, you, you begin to see only at the age of 60. So you're saying that we, we have, we all have time. Yeah. So I showed the example of the Aborigine artist. He started at 90. Okay. Yep. So you can start anytime. So the, the thing is, uh, uh, you keep at it and you keep doing it. Yeah. But I, I think uh, you you kind of uh, summarized very well, right? So those three points are pretty critical. So in fact, one of the questions would, what I would ask was, what's the takeaway, right? For uh, uh, upcoming budding artists or somebody who is aspiring to be an artist. I think those three points, uh, the way you ended, it's a great uh, takeaway. Yeah. So Thanks. one one thing uh, which at least like from my personal so, side, I just want to always say that uh, anonymous attendee. Yeah. So so what do you what do you think of this this art and design now? So yeah, since all of us are like uh, by profession design, and uh, but so is it like design is part of art or art is part of design? Yeah. I think so. Uh, so design uh, design is multidisciplinary from the very beginning, right? So people come from various backgrounds and uh, they are free to do design. Now it's about the sensibilities and skills uh, that a person possesses and uh, what he brings to the design process. There are uh, people from uh, a music, a strong sense of music. So some have a good sense of visual. So I don't think it is, uh, it's, uh, uh, I think design gets inspired by art. But art on its own is a very personal thing. So mm -hmm. some other person has uh, uh, appeal to, uh, to give you an example of that Gujarati artist. For him, the only theme was about watching monkeys in, the, in his courtyard. And all he did was draw monkeys. So there are artists who pick only a very specific theme. Say M.F. Hussain. Uh, would have drawn a lot of things, but it's uh, he's uh, more famous for his horses, right? right? So it's you're doing something and something takes over and then you start doing that. Yep, yep. Cool, so let's take one last question and then we should be good. So which one you can just pick uh, uh, either the, the question on the, uh, the thread or uh, the question on what uh, Onapa, how did he uh, motivate you? So I mean, what, what actually happened after that? So the question is, he said, uh, you can actually start uh, marketing it and stuff. So do you actually market it? Did you get some yeah, money? So I, I did go. So I went uh, to this uh, new internet magazine called the Ken. Mm -hmm. I went, uh, he looked at my work, then he called me to his office. And uh, uh, during that uh, thing, what they were interested was uh, not my cartoons, but uh, me drawing uh, illustrations for their uh, news articles. So I felt this was more of a job of an illustrator. So I, I had a very clear uh, understanding that uh, I wanted to do just uh, uh, the humor part and not about illustrating for articles. So the, those are choices you make. So uh, I would say that uh, uh, Punapa was an architect. Uh, all of in, in Indian news uh, magazines, it's all about political cartoons. So rarely you will see. So even uh, Mario Miranda, although he did beautiful illustrations of uh, scenes in Goa, uh, he is always, uh, uh, he had to make a living by uh, drawing political cartoons, right? So there are compulsions. So the, uh, what I'm trying to say is, uh, you may keep that uh, freedom for yourself to do what you want to do by taking up a, a day job uh, is what I would say. Yeah, absolutely. So, Pinastro, Karthikeyan has an uh, interesting question. Yes, we can just uh, maybe take that one as the last and then end up. So, how do you keep continuity of thoughts when you are uh, creating a threads and if it takes multiple days to create it? Yes, uh, Vikram, uh, it takes uh, 
a uh, lot of days and uh, in terms of continuity uh, like i said uh, uh, once you have got into the act over a period of time uh, you will start uh, mastering it and you will keep the continuity uh, going uh, but uh, <clears throat> uh it's more of uh, like you need to also take breaks and sometimes uh, you need to set it aside and it's not that uh, every time you will get it right uh, so you will have to start all over again is what i would say so is artist a creator or the medium is the creator is that the question yeah i suppose i think uh, you have to be in that state where the medium takes over the artist at least that has been my personal experience initially i was trying to control the thread and all that and uh, gradually i decided to let go and it is only when i let the thread fall on its own is when i discovered that hey this thread is the one leading me to do that so there is a control i am establishing but i don't force it uh, to fall in a certain way because the moment i force it it becomes rigid you don't get that free flowing uh, line also awesome. cool that's it yeah yeah so any any last uh, closing comments hey uh, pudi uh, uh, you will do uh, hear me yeah Yeah, I was just saying that. Any last uh, closing comments from you? Ah, uh, I think I have said uh, what I wanted to say uh, in the thank you slide. So I would say that uh, don't wait to be discovered. Uh, yeah. If you, you keep exploring, and uh, as and when uh, you find something interesting, you should be able to tell to the rest of the world, and you have to come forward. So, right. uh, and there will be lots of failures. So. 2015 i tried uploading my work to mojarto.com uh, which is an ndtv initiative they outright rejected my work so yeah. so which is a good thing right so yes. failure is a good thing so uh, i now realize that uh, i am not bound by any medium so uh, it's not that i am sticking just to thread uh, there is a part two of uh, doing more of conceptual lot awesome super uh, uh, thanks for it and uh, yeah i mean uh, uh, thanks for uh, sharing your journey i think it was a wonderful presentation and thanks to all the participants uh, we'll catch up again yeah. next friday yeah thanks, thanks to the audience thanks. bye yeah